chose to, uh, this Sunday to get my last good wear out of shorts. I think next week's supposed to get cold. <laughs> um, glad everyone's here today. Uh, and uh, my name is Brian Beaver, an elder here. And I uh, want to welcome everyone here this morning as we get ready to, to worship and sing and just praise God today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much today to a place to come and, and enjoy each other's company and praise you just learn more about you and, and worship you. We just uh, ask that we learn how to, to serve others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're back from Oasis, and we have been drowned, and it was a good drowning. We, we came to the river of God. Our kids got splashed in the river of the Lord. The spirit was moving, and the music was
will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your
Well, we'll see how this goes off the cuff because there are no notes this morning. I headed for the basement last night with two things in mind. The first was to organize thoughts for the search team, our search committee meeting that will follow the service today. And the second was to pull meditations together. Didn't get them split up very successfully. Because at this point, uh, as far as the search committee is concerned, I guess I know that there's decision time coming, and it has tend to be more part of my thought process. And that's kind of where my thoughts stayed last night. So if you'll bear with me for being candid for a minute, I think I'll try to tie it together at the end. Like I said, the, uh, as, as we've kind of narrowed this thing down, I'm very aware that we're going to have to make a decision. And the desire to choose the right man is big because I see this as a very important decision for this church for now and for the future. But maybe even more importantly, is the desire to be able to discern God's man for this job. And this is probably one of those times when if he would just write the name across the back, it would be really nice. How many times have we thought about that over the years? I don't think that's going to happen. So how do we ultimately get to that point? I think I have to, at least for me, I have to trust that God is part of this process. And one of the ways that I, as I think about it, one of the things that I see demonstrated is that when we sat down and we trimmed it to three names, it was a unanimous decision. There was no dissent. Everybody agreed. I have to believe that God's spirit is part of that process. And the God that I believe helps us work through that is the same God that sent his son. And the bigger picture is that his son died so that we can have eternal life. And that's what we commemorate, that's what we think about at this time sacrifice that he made for us that is the bigger picture that plays out in smaller ways. Bow with me for prayer. Father, we thank you for this group of believers that's gathered here this morning. Lord, we're thankful for the sacrifice that you were willing to make for each of us. Lord, I pray that we'd be worthy of that. I pray that you will bless us this morning. In Jesus' name.
I can stand up here this morning and say, man, I'm glad last week is over. Because in our business, there are two weeks out of the year where we get to take inventory. And uh, a lot of what my staff calls it, I can't repeat this morning. But it basically is a tough week. Me included, we dread it. And when it's done, there's this feeling of relief. Thank goodness we all now have six months until the next time. And I think some of those feelings are kind of the exact opposite of what we should be feeling at offering time. I think there should be a feeling of gratitude for what we have been given. And probably a willingness as well as joy in being able to return a portion of it. We don't own it. It's God's to begin with. And now's an opportunity to return that portion. Father, thank you for the way you bless us, for all that you've given us. And Lord, as we bring a portion of it back, I just uh, ask that you'll give wisdom in how it is used and that it will do many things for you. In your name I pray. Amen. going to need my glasses this morning. But I can't see you guys at that looking over them, so. Huh? No, I don't need one. Hear a little background noise. Um, some of you might not know this, but I've actually written written three books since I've been a member of your church. We've been a member of this church since President Obama became a president, 2008. One of the first things I remember at our new house was his inauguration ceremony. Well, normally when I'm preaching, I make a few sketchy notes and I don't even pay much attention to them. But this time, God led me to write an extra chapter of my books, which will never be published, and I've had two months to work on this, so it's, I've told a couple people it's written in stone now, so, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is read the chapter that you'll never see in any of my books, and if I could give you a copy, you could stick it, hold, stick it in a book, but you're going to hear this chapter, unpublished, and, uh, yeah, they have my picture up. Good. I'll stand over here so you can see the picture. <laughs> um, the yellow bricks on the overhead represent all the ideas I've had over the past two months. So as you can see, I could have said much more in my Halloween sermon. And I called it my Halloween sermon. I even asked for this time slot. I said, I've got to be as close to Halloween as possible when I preach this. But in order to finish on time, I have to just give you the bare bones or the skeleton of what I have to say, which is this. So this yellow brick road will be more of an expressway 
I have developed an outline that has eight main points or big yellow bricks and about a dozen subheadings or small stepping stones and we'll just follow my yellow brick path to see where it leads us. We may not end up in Kansas anymore. And uh, the way I did the outline was this. I made little yellow squares for each point. As you can see. <laughs> but like I say, I'm just going to tell you a story. Just read it. Once upon a time, Martin Luther began the Protestant Reformation on Halloween. He posted his 95 theses, or theses on the cathedral door in Germany on October 31st, 1517. And do you realize that on October 31st, 2017 will be our 500th anniversary? I was thinking that year maybe we should hand out with our trick-or-treats, we should hand out little Bibles or gospel tracts to the kids might be appropriate. Just If they ask why, say, well, this is our 500th anniversary. We just wanted you to know. October 31st was the eve, eve of All Saints Day. Remember, Martin Luther was Catholic. He was a priest, but he was a professor also. It was the eve of All Saints Day, which is one of the holiest holy days in the Catholic Church. And that's where we get the name Hallowed Evening or Halloween. But I was thinking at the time, yeah, right, hallowed be thy name, but Halloween is anything but hallowed, not hallow, but hollow, as in the legend of Sleepy Hollow, which brings me to yellow brick number two. When we first moved to Great Bend, I had just retired, and uh, we lived in a different house. It was actually a duplex on Forest Street. It's not our current address where Eric and Nina used to live. And I would walk a mile a day, and I would, I checked it out with my odometer. If I walked to Walmart and back, or to Sunflower Bank and back, or to the Quick Shop and back, it was exactly a mile, you know, close enough. And also, going to the library, going the other direction. So what I did is when I went to the library, I checked out some classic books that I had read long ago, like Moby Dick. Uh, I always liked Robert Frost, his poems. Uh, one of them is, I have miles to go before I sleep, you know, those poems. And two Washington Irving classics. One is Rip Van Winkle, and the other is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And that's about Ichabod Crane and the Headless Horseman. Did you know that the name Ichabod is in the Bible? It's in 1 Samuel 4, 21 and 22. If you remember, God spoke to Samuel when he was just a boy. Uh, he went into Eli three times and says, are you talking to me? He kept hearing his name. And Eli finally says, well, you know, I think God's speaking to you. Maybe you should just listen and say, next time he speaks, say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. But what we didn't hear too often was the message that he gave Eli. And Samuel's actually afraid to give it to him. And God said this message would make their ears tingle. Well, what happened was the Israelite army went into battle, and they were defeated. So they had to go back to battle again, and they tried a different approach this time. They took the ark of God from the tabernacle and with it his uh, it took, his two sons were priests and they were carrying it and remember they weren't good people the army was defeated again his sons were killed and the ark was captured by the enemy when Eli heard the news he was an old man and I like to think he was sitting in his rocking chair and he tipped over backwards and it broke his neck the wife of one of his sons, who'd be his daughter-in-law, was expecting a baby. When she heard the news that her husband died and the ark was stolen, she went into labor. But she was in such despair, the Bible says she just stared straight ahead. And when they said, you've had a son, she didn't even respond. 
but she did say, name the baby Ichabod, meaning no glory. For she said, the glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. So that's your Bible Halloween story for the day. So now we need to ask, what was the ark of God? It's ark number two, nothing to do with Noah. It was actually a small box, I think it said it was like two by three feet, made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold. Inside the box were the two actual stone tablets that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. They put that in that ark. And on top were two gold angels with their wings outspread and they were facing each other but their eyes were looking down at the Ten Commandments. In between, the top cover which held the angels and enclosed the stone tablets was called the Mercy Seat. Once a year, the high priest entered the Holy of Holies, which was hidden behind a heavy curtain, keep that in mind, and sprinkled blood on the Mercy Seat to bring forgiveness for the sins of the people. Then, in effect, the angels looked down to see God's holy commandments, but instead they saw the blood of the Lamb. And so the people received mercy because of that sacrifice. So think about what happened when Jesus was on the cross. He was sacrificed as the Lamb of God for our sins. The moment he died, there was a strong earthquake, and that heavy curtain in the temple that concealed the ark was torn in two from top to bottom and you know where that came from no man could have done that it was God this gave us access to the holy of holies where the ark had been hidden since the time of Moses and it represented the very presence of God this is only possible through the precious blood of Jesus who is our high priest he led the way and here we are which brings me to, uh, to our present day, which is brick number six in my outline. And uh, it's part two of this message. I titled it, in fact, this is the driving force of the original thoughts that I had, this whole brick, yellow brick road. American exceptionalism. I was watching Fox News one night and they had a professor on that was saying that there is nothing exceptional about America. And uh, what brought it up was not long before that, our president said the same thing. He said, well, where you know, we're like Greece or Britain and their zenith, whatever. And so, but uh, the people who were interviewing him and stuff said, well, uh, what do you think about we delivered Europe? <laughs> A few other things. So they disagreed. But here's the problem. Don't even worry about the argument. America has historically had a Christian foundation. That is why we have been exceptional. But when our leaders remove Christ from the schools and the government, and the majority of our citizens are not Christian, the critics are absolutely right. We are no different than any other nation at that point. And their policies guarantee a self-fulfilling prophecy like kryptonite to Superman or like Samson with a haircut we then lose our power and we become very mediocre and you know what comes next here in Sleepy Hollow our precious ark is captured by the enemy and we become Ichabod Crane facing a headless horseman for Jesus is the head of his church and he has been the head of this nation historically and he's just been chopped off and cast aside that is scary very scary okay going back to a different topic when I was in the Navy I like to tell sea stories <laughs> when I was in the Navy there was a sailor that walked up to me and said, he wasn't a Christian, but he knew where I stood. He 
said, what makes you so special? Christians are just like anyone else. The only answer I could give him was that I had Jesus in my life. The only thing that makes America so special is Jesus. We have been a Christian nation. For that matter, there we go, not in Kansas anymore. Astronomers think that our planet Earth is nothing exceptional either. They argue that we are not as big as Jupiter, Saturn, not as close to the sun as Mercury, orbiting a rather small star. They speculate there could be dozens of other planets and other galaxies as good as ours. But I only have one question. You notice how Jesus would answer an argument with a question? <laughs> okay, tell me this. Why then did the creator of all that we see, the creator, send his one and only son to our planet to live and die for us? He didn't send him to Saturn or Jupiter. And he didn't come as a little green Martian. The psalmist asked, What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you visit him? <laughs> what are we really? Maybe we're no more valuable than whales or monkeys. The problem with that is, Jesus didn't come to earth as a whale or monkey either. Isaiah declared, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And one day soon, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, which basically covers the whole universe, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That sounds pretty exceptional to me. What do I know? Now we want to ask the question, when Jesus came to the earth the first time, what did he claim as his own? He was born in a borrowed manger. <laughs> he died in a borrowed tomb. Can you imagine someone asking, can I borrow your grave for the weekend? You can have it back next week, I won't need it after that. <laughs> At one point, Jesus said, Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He had no home, no property. He didn't have a wife or children of his own. Even when he came to his own people, the Jews, his own people received him not. And he added, My kingdom is not of this world. So what is the one thing in the whole wide world that he did claim as his own? Any ideas? <laughs> one time he asked Peter, who do men say that I am? Another question. Peter gave him the world's opinions. <laughs> but when Peter told Jesus his own opinion, that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus changed his name from Simon to Peter, or the rock. You think of petrified wood, Peter and petrified. Then he added, on this rock I will build what? My church. The church, you, 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 and me, are the only things in the entire world that belong to him. Okay, go ahead and tell me that is not exceptional. He says, <laughs> he says, if two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am with them in their midst. He says, whatever you did to the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And even in these scary last days, thinking of Halloween again, he promises, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And at the very end, he will come and take us unto himself. But where he is, there we may be also. Therefore, the Bible says, Fear not, for I am with you, even at Halloween. 
he also said the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church okay you're ready for my final little meditation that I always thought I've been thinking of this for a year or more I always thought if I were an elder at this church this would be the meditation I'd give for offering or communion after we find our new pastor suppose that several Sundays later things are not going well <laughs> one fateful Sunday he walked up to the pulpit without even raising his head to look at the congregation he dispensed with the praise service and communion and just made this plea today this church is facing some of the biggest bills in its history and we might just as well take up the offering first and see if there's enough to keep our doors open what was us what our pastor didn't notice that we had three very special guests visiting us this morning <laughs> the coach of the K-State football team the coach of the KU basketball team and the owner of Microsoft he just didn't notice um, if he would have allowed us to have a praise service then to have this communion meditation and an awesome sermon afterward Maybe these three guests would have given more in our offering plates. One man sitting beside them in the back of the church thought to himself, our new pastor says, to, today we have the biggest bills in the history of our church. Well, duh, Bill Snyder, Bill Self, and Bill Gates. <laughs> and if any one of them would have been inspired to tithe today, we'd have had enough money for all those bills and on in the future the richest man in Israel's history was King Solomon he had wall to wall gold one day Jesus said the queen of the south or the queen of Sheba came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom and now one greater than Solomon is here And incidentally, he's also bigger than, greater than the three bills I just mentioned. He may not have owned much personally on this earth, but his father has the cattle on a thousand hills. And he is a future heir to everything. I think we need to recognize who is here among us today. And praise him first. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> Didn't dispense with it then also observe communion in remembrance of who him and finally go on to preach the gospel to every creature and then see if the offering doesn't take care of itself I think that is an exceptional idea finally there's one little stone I don't want you to miss don't trip over it on the way out uh, I told Bob that I wanted to preach this sermon because it had been haunting me for several weeks. <laughs> but I added, it's okay to be haunted if it's a Holy Ghost. our nation to a godly nation and it is what what sets us apart my tie into the yellow brick road is their search was to find the wizard our search is to find Jesus and if that is your search today we'd like to pray with you the elders are here and this is a perfect day to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior the other thing is if you've gone to church here and you'd like to make this your church home we'll we'll gladly accept you today so we'll open prayer time up but in the meantime we'll let our musicians go Please stand. That we had at the Oasis, and it was in the garden, and nobody knew it except the wrinkled teenagers, and we all sang along. But what the theme was, was coming back to the Lord and being in his presence. Coming back and renewing your strength. Amen. I come to the garden of God, while the dew. Still on the road. 
I'm going to do it. I can do it. I, I can multitask, Bob. <laughs> this is a time of prayer we do every Sunday. And uh, we usually get some youngsters to send microphones around. If you have a, a prayer, just stick up your hand. I was driving down South Washington yesterday. I guess I hadn't been down there for a while. And I drove by Becker Tire. And I saw their sign, but there was a, a like a sub sign above it. And it's, I didn't catch it all. It said, bring all your problems to, and I thought, the throne of God, right? I even drove around the block. I thought, man, maybe this is some new marketing thing. You might offend some people, but you might bring in some good folks too. But isn't that right? Though? It didn't say that, by the way. It said, bring your problems to us. We can work on any make and model. But you know what? God could work on any make and model too. So whatever your problem is, it's not bigger than the Lord. So Judy had a, had a prayer back there. Yes, I just want to remind everybody, um, we have every confidence in our elders. We have every confidence in uh, the group that is searching for a new pastor for us. But I want to remind everybody how important it is for each and every one of us to daily pray for us to find the man that God has in mind for us. It's very important. He is going to minister to each of us. So each of us needs to seek out God in bringing us to the right man. Oh, I'll, I have a, a quick addition here. Uh, some of you recall that this summer, Nathan, my grandson, was up at the Cleveland Clinic with his seizure disorder. Well, while he was there, there was another little boy by the name of Nathan that was there. And my Nathan witnessed to this little Nathan. Well, we had word this week that this little Nathan is going back to the Cleveland Clinic, and his mother has petitioned our prayers. He's going to have a hemispherectomy, and um, that's pretty serious. But the younger you are when you have a half of your brain removed, the easier your body can compensate for him. So they have asked for prayers for this little boy named Nathan, and I... I said that we would be praying, and I want to invite our church to pray for him also. Um, I, we've got a little friend, Brady's little friend, and he's a boy on our football team. His name is Caden Hoffman, and he had his appendix rupture um, last week. So he's in the hospital and on lots of antibiotics, and they're trying to clear everything up. And then also my stepsister is having exploratory surgery on Tuesday. Her name's Angie Worth. And they're going to figure out what's going on with her um, on Tuesday. I have a prayer request and a praise. Uh, prayer request is uh, our neighbor for about a dozen years, uh, Earl Adams, has uh, throat cancer. Um, they've had another surgery on him recently. He's too frail to have. Uh, chemo, I think they're going to try radiation and it's probably uh, the prognosis is not not very good, and so would you pray for for Earl and uh, I, I want to praise Dan for, for having the courage to, to, to speak up about where our country is going. Too many pastors sidestep that, they don't have the courage to tackle that tough issue uh, where our government's taking us and how we're abandoning Christ. Uh, I just praise him for that. I'm asking kind of twofold for one family. My friend Mary's mother has had a long battle with lung cancer. She's had a lot of complications. And she's at a point where she's at home, but she's not eating. Has the probability of, of course, not doing well. Um, and the family's trying to talk with her about if this is a choice or if this is something they need to help her with. So that's of some concern to the family, and just in general, no matter who it is, we don't want to see anyone hurt. Um, so please keep Mary's mom in your prayers, and then also my friend Mary, because I think a lot of us know that care for the caregivers is very important. And her health has suffered, and she has been the 24-7 caregiver for her mother for almost two months, uh, with a little bit of relief here and there. But as she does that, then she can't care for her own health or her family's. So I would 
ask that we also keep Mary to pray for her in mind as well. Cool. Over here. Um, my dad is going to go to Dr. Flesky on Thursday, and um, hopefully this is so that he has a date to get his knee put back in. So just pray that uh, the infection is completely gone. It was gone a couple weeks ago, but Dr. Flesky wanted to make absolute sure. So um, just that we can have a date for that surgery soon. It's just hanging out there, and everything's going to be okay as long as we don't have any other symptoms, which is good. Um, and then he's still having trouble with the Bell's palsy. So if you could just continue your prayers for him, that's why he's not here today. He's not feeling so well today. So, And I do appreciate all the prayers. What is his name? Chris. Chris. Thank you. of a generic um, I hope everybody can, can pray for this. We've been to several weddings in the last few months and you know marriages seem to be under attack greatly and you know the divorce rate's so high plus marriage is under attack now socially. I just wish everybody would pray for every young couple that you hear that is getting married um, you know for strength for them so that they have that conviction to make their marriage work and so we can get families back on the right track. Okay, good list. Let's, uh, let's go to prayer. You know, the Word of God, James 5.16 says, The prayers of a righteous man availeth much, and a righteous woman. And we can pray individually and collectively. Let, let me read the list that, that we have here. I'm going to ask to we take a minute and everybody pray individually and then collectively we'll send prayers to God. Prayers for a new pastor. Very, very important in our church. Another thing that I'm going to mention personally is the prayers for this upcoming election. Advanced voting begins Tuesday. The election itself, November 4th, is just days away. Very, very important what, what is happening out there. We have... Uh, Charlotte's grandson, Nathan, who has witnessed to another Nathan and uh, asking for prayers there as he's in a, uh, a Cleveland clinic. Hayden Hoffman on the appendix rupture, Angie Worth surgery on Tuesday. Earl Adams with uh, throat cancer. We have prayers for Mary and her mom uh, concerning lung cancer. A prayer for her, her family, the caregivers. Very important. Deb's dad going to see Dr. Flesky. Pray that that infection would be gone, that we can get a date set for knee surgery. A praise for Chris with the, the mass on the brain, the Bell's palsy, palsy, that we pray that those symptoms would vanish, that healing would be there. And for Jeremy and Julie, for their house, it's gone. The first step is there. We need to just get it completed, that these folks would, would be approved for their loan. And as Dorian mentioned, prayers for young couples getting married, how very important that is. Let's just take a minute of silent prayer, everyone, and, and hold these needs up to God in prayer.
Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that you're God. You are Lord of our lives. Lord God, in all of these prayers that have been offered today and all these needs that you see, there's not one that is bigger than you. You are God. You are victorious over everything in our lives. And as we pray for our new pastor, Lord God, guide and direct our, our steering committee, our selection committee to make the right choice, to pick the one that you have for us for this upcoming election. Lord God, this is so important. And as Dan reminded us today, get this nation turned back to Christ. We have got to reverse this and put you first in things. Help is always something every week that comes up. We have so many requests on this list for healing, for needs to be met, miracles, God. We need miracles for so many of these people. And it's always gratifying when we can offer praise and say, we see that prayer is working. We see that you've heard us. We are seeing results that things are turning around. Father, remind us this week how important prayer is and how it's good to come to you as a body like this, but we can pray anytime we want. We don't have to have a special time or a special place. It can be as simple as sitting on the mower, riding, cutting the grass, or going to work, or just taking a brief moment at lunch or wherever we might be to offer prayers. And keep us mindful, Lord, to thank you because even though we might not get immediate answers, we know that you, you, you hear our prayers. You hear us. You, you know our heart and you know our, our needs, God, even before we pray. And we thank you for that. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we praise you. Amen. We have a few announcements today. Um, it's just around the corner. Turkey Talent is coming up. Uh, Thanksgiving dinner. There's a sign-up in the back for both. Uh, signing up to bring things for, for dinner. And please go ahead and sign up because... A bloodhound has nothing on Sonia. She'll hunt you out. Uh, so um, the lists are up. I want, wanted to make a comment. It's the, the talent show we have, a lot of it is, is talent. A lot of it's just turkey. But uh, it is so hard to, to throw that together at the last minute. We're trying something new uh, this year, trying to get all the music and everything in a week ahead of time so we can have it flow and it, and it doesn't take an hour and a half. Um, we ask that you try and uh, anybody that wants to, to do either a skit or a song or whatever, to kind of turn that stuff in to us beforehand. I know this is, is, is kind of questionable, but when you do a, a song or anything, kind of look at the lyrics what they actually say, what they actually mean, because everything you do needs to honor God, and we just ask that you do that. And uh, any other announcements? Hey, Brian, my, my hair used to be brown before I started doing sound for Turkey Talent, so def definitely get in a week in advance. Just thought I'd mention also that uh, Neil Stewart's going to be here next week uh -huh. to talk I about I think camp. Julie could probably help you get your hair back to brown. Cool. My <laughs> wife said that looks stupid, but thank you. Men's breakfast, Saturday morning, 7 o'clock. Okay. Um, we're going to be working on um, a packing party for Operation Christmas Child, so be gathering items if you want to participate, and uh, you can bring them anytime or bring them on the 16th, so mark your calendars to stay after church on the 16th light lunch and set up boxes and things in the back and separate it and let everybody help pack some boxes so we can send some boxes out to kids overseas. Um, it's a wonderful missions opportunity for um, those folks who have their feet on the ground and it gives them an opportunity to get into communities and share uh, Christ with people who maybe haven't, haven't had that chance. So it's a great um, way to be a part of that mission. So I would encourage you to mark your calendar and plan to uh, stay after. In the bulletin, there's kind of a little description of what that timeline will be. Um, so again, just keep that on your calendar and I'll, I'll continue to remind you, but um, I'd like to see as many of us participate as we can. Pat, Pat, what kind
kind of items should people be bringing to put in the box, please? On the table over there in the back, um, there's a handout that's got, um, really you can pretty much pack anything that's going to fit in a shoebox. Um, there's a shorter list of what not to put in the shoebox, so you might pay more attention to what not to put in there. So like no liquids, no um, guns, those kinds of things, you know. Um, so it's easier to look at the do not pack list. Um, anything, um, there's also some pictures back there. Um, if any of you are kind of stymied for what could I do, um, there's lots of things you could make to put in there, little purses or bags or um, some really essential items like small tools that they could use or fishing wire or small fishing kit things that could be more practical in some of the areas where they're being delivered. So um, this is for guys, too. It's not just for ladies, not just for the kids. Um, guys, get your thinking hats on and uh, think so of ways that you could make a, a contribution to those boxes. So thanks. And this is Project Christmas Child, is that right? Offer, offer. I think I heard something on Caleb this week that not only the boxes go overseas, there's actually boxes that are delivered here in the United, in the United States. So it's not just overseas. So it's a great project. Anything else? Okie doke. Everybody that was uh, that went on the trip with us last weekend, come on up. Jacob, yeah, we Anna, don't want to be here all day. Come on. Kalia. What's her new name? Anna, andale, por favor. Connor. There he is. Dolphin. I'm going to tell, if somebody has something to say, far be it for me to uh, thwart that. But I will take you off the hook if you don't have anything to say and do a quick overview that shouldn't take more than 30 minutes of what we did at Oasis last weekend. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to I'm saying you don't have to, but if you got something that stood out, there's, I mean, now is your, now is your time. Big hit for me was um, seeing socks and everything. Um, was not the whole thing. It was learning about in Christ and getting developed in Christ. Because if you just sang songs and did that, then he'd pay. The devil would want us to go there every year and just sing songs. But getting developed in Christ is the best part. Anybody else? Anybody? No pressure. No pressure. We we had a great weekend. I was encouraged. Uh, these guys were great. We had some other guys that were involved as well uh, that aren't with us this morning, but it was wonderful. The guy that spoke, Jeff Walling, was amazing. You guys have a chance to hear this guy. I'm telling you, he could make Shakespeare interesting, okay? That's not a dig on anybody, but this, this cat was good. And uh, it had a way of explaining the things, and I felt like it was definitely um, God involved, okay? That it was this guy that was bringing the word and bringing the message with this group, okay? Because we've got some young guys. It was their first oasis. Uh, Jacob was the veteran of the crew, been to like four oasis. But we started out in Genesis, and the first day took a trip through the Bible to Christ, okay, that we were with God. Bob always says in the cool of the evening, because he doesn't like mornings, but whatever, um, that actually had, you know, had conversations with the Lord, which was amazing. And, and then we all know the bad decisions that were made, and we were separated. God spoke to us a little bit, and through Christ, not only was the separation made whole there was no chasm there anymore but actually god came to live actually in us okay not beside us okay not at arm's length but actually through the holy spirit of god actually dwells in us which is amazing second day um have each other's backs is what the guy said you're going to get tugged on there's going to be temptation and as your friends are getting tugged on by temptation Come around them and drag them back to the light. Drag them back the right way. And ultimately is that there's evil in the world. And we know it. And we don't have to look very far to find it. Because there's folks cutting people's heads off. And there's a disease out there. There's Ebola. And these guys, you know, these guys, 
think about that stuff, y'all. They think about that stuff, and it affects their lives. They may be teenagers, but they think about that stuff because we hear it, and we get the feedback. Parents, we get the feedback, but you know what? None of that can mess with our eternity. We don't have to live in fear. We do not have to live in fear because we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? That was the gist of the weekend. Powerful message. Simple message? Absolutely. Powerful message? Absolutely. We got a song. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, we're good. We're going to sing a song. Everybody stand up. Let's go. Don't move.